CoQ10 supplements are incredibly popular and many viewers of this channel take it. So what does the evidence show? Are there benefits from taking CoQ10? It's essential for our mitochondria's function, so the mitochondria are the powerhouses of our cells. CoQ10 is also known to have antioxidant properties, and it's found in high concentrations in the heart, liver, and kidney. But here's the crucial point. All of our cells can produce their own CoQ10. Now, there are some people who struggle to produce their own CoQ10 because of various mutations that have happened. So for those people, their mitochondria, they aren't functioning correctly. So if we were going to see any benefits from taking CoQ10 supplements, it's for these people. To explore this, a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial was done using high-dose CoQ10 treatment, but unfortunately there were only minor effects seen on aerobic capacity and there were no other clinically relevant improvements in strength or resting lactate. In a systematic review that combined all of the relevant clinical studies together that only looked at patients who had issues with their mitochondria, it found that 73% of people had no response whatsoever to CoQ10 treatment. And for those that did have some response, it was only partial. And it was very difficult to figure out if this was a true effect from CoQ10 or if it was a placebo effect. Currently in medicine, there's no good treatments for patients that have issues with their mitochondria, so some guidelines suggest trying CoQ10. It's the equivalent of throwing things at the wall to see what sticks, so it's not exactly a glowing endorsement. And remember, this is for a population where we should have seen significant benefits from taking CoQ10 because these patients had low levels already of CoQ10 and issues with their mitochondria, but again, no clear benefits were seen. There are five other common reasons for why people use CoQ10 supplements, and we'll go through each one. Now, it's important to note as we're going through the research that there are different forms of CoQ10. We've got ubiquinone, which is the oxidized form of CoQ10 and is commonly found in commercial supplements. However, it must be reduced in the body to ubiquinol, and the research that we're going through includes both types. So let's start with statins. Statin medications are used to lower LDL cholesterol, but because of how statins work, they can reduce the levels of CoQ10. So a common idea that you'll hear online is that people who take statin medications should also take CoQ10, because CoQ10 supplements may reduce the chance of developing muscle pains from statins. However, a statement from the American Heart Association says that the randomized controlled trial evidence is not supportive of this idea. The strongest trial that we have was published in 2015 because it only included patients that had confirmed issues with their muscles from statins. This trial was an eight-week randomized double-blind study, and unfortunately there were no differences between the group who took simvastatin and placebo compared to simvastatin and CoQ10. So there were no differences in pain, muscle strength or VO2 max, leading to the conclusion that CoQ10 supplements do not reduce muscle pains in patients with statin-induced muscle issues. The same conclusion was found from a 2015 Mayo Clinic meta-analysis. But adding to the confusion online, there was another meta-analysis done in 2018 that concluded that there were improvements from CoQ10 supplements. So what's going on? Well, unfortunately, in that 2018 meta-analysis, the trials that were included, they didn't only include patients that had issues from statins in terms of their muscle function. This resulted in significant heterogeneity, meaning that one trial would show a benefit and another trial wouldn't. Overall, it was a poor analysis, and that's why none of the clinical guidelines suggest adding CoQ10 supplements to statins. Instead, if you are on a statin, make sure to choose one that's hydrophilic, meaning that it doesn't get into muscles or fat. For example, the statin that I personally take is called Resuvastatin. It's also important to remember that muscle issues from Resuvastatin is incredibly rare. It happens in about 1 to 2 patients per 100. The next proposed benefit from CoQ10 supplements is for patients who have heart failure. Because heart biopsies from these patients, they've demonstrated low levels of CoQ10. Multiple studies have been done, so let's have a look at a 2022 meta-analysis, again that combined all of the relevant clinical studies together. Unfortunately, many of the trials were poorly conducted with a high risk of bias. So at this time, it's unclear whether CoQ10 supplements are genuinely effective for patients with heart failure. Moving on to cancer, there is a suggestion that for some chemotherapy medications that are toxic to the heart, CoQ10 may help protect the heart from damage. 
Outside of that though, there's no randomized clinical trial of CoQ10 as a treatment for cancer. Again, there's a lack of evidence for benefit. For people who suffer from migraines, there is a small study that included 42 people where CoQ10 supplements seemed to reduce the frequency of migraine attacks. It was a small study though, and while it's encouraging, further, larger trials are needed. The final common reason for why people take CoQ10 is to lower their blood pressure, but a 2018 meta-analysis showed contradicting results where some studies found weak or no effects on blood pressure, while other studies showed improvements. Once again, we don't have a clear signal of benefit from the available research that we've got today. From all of these studies though, CoQ10 supplements do appear to be safe, with the caveat that it is an antioxidant. This is a problem because when we exercise, we release all sorts of oxidants and that's a good thing. It signals to our body that it needs to become more efficient. So taking antioxidant supplements tends to block the signal and therefore can block the positive effects of exercise. It's your health, your decision, but for me personally, I only want to take a supplement that's got proven benefits such as creatine and there's a link in the pinned comment to all of the supplements that I personally take. When it comes to CoQ10, because we don't have any clear signal of benefit from the available studies and the potential effect of blunting the positive effects of exercise, I would not personally take it. Instead, alongside the short list of supplements that I do take, there are two medications that I also take to try and make sure that I'm as healthy as possible for as long as possible, and you can learn about them in the next video here. A massive thank you to DoNotAge.org for the $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization, and to benefit from their ingredients as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.